Okay, what I want to do here is talk a little bit about Kirchhoff circuits, and I'm going to use the example number one from the homework I gave you. Um, so that's it drawn there, and what we want to do is work out work out the currents, uh, find the current in each resistor, find the potential difference between points C and F. Um, we'll see how this video goes. I don't know if we'll get this all done in 10 minutes, but we're going to learn a bit about Kirchhoff's in doing this. So the way I look at these Kirchhoff circuits is you've got to do a loop and you decide the direction of the loop and I always start from one of the EMFs so the 70, the 60 or the 80 volts we start from and I always start from the positive go out from the positive and my loop will be like that so with this one I could go there, there or there but I always start from the positive and that makes that EMF a positive in my equation. Um, before we get to that point though, we've got to have decided which way the currents flow. And that's a, again, an arbitrary decision. You don't know which way the currents flow, you can make a pretty good guess, but it doesn't matter if you get them all wrong, you will still work out everything perfectly. It's important to know that. You can get two wrong, one wrong, three wrong, all of them right, it's all going to work out perfectly. You probably already <clears throat> know enough about it to know that if your answer comes out negative for a particular current, then that just means you've got the direction wrong. So I'm going to call this one I1, and I'm going to say it goes in that direction. I'm going to call this one I2, and I'm going to say it goes in that direction, and I'm going to call the one that goes down in the middle there I3, and I'm going to say it goes down. They may be right, one of them may be wrong. If it's wrong, it'll come out. Things to remember when you do work through all this working, with your current directions in that direction. If it is wrong, it will come out negative. Don't then use that, change that negative answer into a positive answer and then try and calculate the other ones because then they'll come out wrong. Use whatever answers you get, negative or positive, all the way to the end, and then you just change the direction um, of the arrow that was negative at the end. Uh, that'll make more sense, hopefully, as we do it. So we make up the direction of the current any which way we want, then we write our equations for our loops. Um, so we'll write the first equation, we'll do the loop on this side, the 70 is positive, we go around the loop this way, we then go through another EMF, now we're doing that loop, so that EMF there, we're negative, positive, positive, negative, so we're coming out of a negative, so we'll actually make that a negative voltage, then we go through the resistor in the same direction as the um, current that we made up, so that's a I3, so that's minus 3K I3. Then we're going through 2K. Now we've said <coughs> that the current in this loop is going that way. So at 2K, we're going against the current when we come back this way. So that's a plus 2K I2 equals zero. And we've got one equation. Um, the next equation, uh, it doesn't matter probably which, which equations you end up doing. Um, I've started with that 70, let's go with the 81, and we're coming out from the positive again, so we'll go 80, we're going with the current, so we go minus 4ki1, then again we go positive, negative, we came out of a positive, it was positive, we come out of a negative, it must be uh, negative, so minus 60 volts again, <coughs> then we go through the resistor again, minus 3ki3, equals zero. Now we've got two equations here. This one's got I2, this one's got I3, so I write two and three there. These are becoming simultaneous equations, so we've got to keep them in our mind as to what we're doing. This one's got one, I1 and I3, so that's one and three. So we've got two simultaneous equations, two unknowns, no, three unknowns, two equations. We can't solve it. Now, if we do another loop here, and you might say, now we've got three equations, everything's cool. And we can then solve it. Three equations, three unknowns, it won't work. And it won't work because we won't get the linear independence if we just do another loop like that. So the third equation that I want to use is a current junction. That's the way to do these problems. And that's very important. Otherwise, you'll use the three equations, you'll spend 15 minutes, and you'll have a zero equals zero answer. Uh, no solution. Um, you'll learn more about that when you do more maths. The main thing is just uh, do your two equations, go for a junction. Now that junction, we've got I1 coming in, and we've got I2 and I3 going out. So we can say that I1 
is equal to I2 plus I3. All right, now what we can then do is substitute. Now it depends which one. I can get rid of the I1 in here, and then we've just got equations with I2 and I3, so that's what we can do. So we'll go 80 minus 4k, and instead of I1, we've got I2 plus I3 minus 60 minus 3k I3 equals 0. So now we've got an equation that's just got I2s and I3s, and it is linear independent from this equation, so we can actually use those two equations, but we'll just simplify it a little bit first. 4k I2 minus 4k I3 minus 60 minus 3k I3 equals 0. Um, so what have we got? 4k I3 minus 4k I3 minus 3k I3. So write that out as minus 7k I3 minus 4k I2 and minus 60 equals 0. Okay, so the other equation that we've got with 2s and 3s in, so now we've got an equation with 2s and 3s in, is that first one there. So this is the one where we can now use to sort this all out. So let's just simplify this one though before we go on. This one's got an 80 and it's a minus a 60. So if we get rid of that, 80 minus 60 is 20. Good. So we can write minus 7k i3 minus 4k i2 um, plus 20. And we'll just make them equal because they both equal 0, so they both equal each other. Equals 70 minus 60, which is 10. 10 minus 3k i3 plus 2k i2 equals 0. Right, so now we've got our equation. We should be able to solve this, no problem. But we've got to be able to get rid of um, some I2s IQ, I, I or I3s. I want to get rid of the I2s. So if I multiply this whole equation here by negative 2, we'll get rid of them. So if we do that, we end up with negative 20 plus 6k I3 minus 4k I2 equals 0. Right? Now what we've got, we can cancel out the IKs, the I2s. We're starting to look good. So what we've got is minus 7k I3. I want to do this all on one bit of paper. Plus 20 is equal to <coughs> minus 20 plus 6k I3. So where's that got us to? All right, so if we add... Well, what we'll do, we'll bring the 20 over that side. So we've got 40, put the 7k i3 on that side, is equal to 13k i3. 7k i3 and 6k i3, 13k i3. Now, if we divide both sides by 13k, we should have i3. And I3 is going to be equal to, let me just have a little look here, 40 divided by 13,000 equals 3.07 times 10 to the minus 3, which is 3.07 milliamps, and it's in the right direction. Once we've got that answer, we're looking good, because we can now use that I3, put it back in that one to get I2, put it into that one to get I1, and we've got all the currents. If one of them comes out negative, we change the direction. That's probably going to happen on I2. And um, then we can do that. I'm just afraid that we're running out of time a little bit here. So just get it back, have a look. Um, I think I'll stop it right there because we're up to 929.